Hi, welcome to the QNX Virtual Campus Lecture Series. In today's video, we're going to be talking to Doug, um, and Doug's going to be telling you about the Momentix IDE, Eclipse, and the CDT project. Here's Doug. Hi there, my name is Doug Schaefer. I'm a senior software developer here at QNX, and I work on the Momentix IDE. As well, I'm also the project lead for an open source project called the Eclipse CDT. And that project really forms the C, C++ development environment that is at the core of the Momentix IDE. The CDT has four major components. Uh, first one, obviously, when you're writing C++ code, you need a really nice editor to do so. And a CDT provides that. It has a lot of the basic functionality that you'd expect in a, in a nice editor, things like keyword highlighting, and as well some really advanced features such as uh, Content Assist, which will try to take uh, a guess at possible completions for code that you're typing in. Really help to speed up the productivity and also gives you a chance to learn a bit about uh, the APIs that you're trying to use. As well as it has a resource management system and really what this is doing is taking a look at the, the source and the other artifacts that go into your project and tries to figure out a bit about what they are and we really uh, leverage a lot of this for a lot of the functionality that the CDT provides. We really aimed at doing a lot higher level automation and providing you, the user, with a lot more information um, about what's in your project. Um, this essentially requires that you kind of lay out your project in a special way. Um, Eclipse knows about the, uh, the files and the directories that make up your project, um, which luckily enough is resembles mainly your the layout of your system, but often when you get into legacy projects, projects that have been around a while, um, they're not necessarily fit in as nicely, so there's usually some juggling to do there. Um, but really the benefits you get, things like um, we understand what files in the project are binaries, so then when you go to launch a debug session, um, it's easy for us to pick out what the binaries are so we can filter that for you. Um, as well, we do some fairly uh, introspection fairly deep introspection into the source code as well. We have a whole parser infrastructure that takes a look at the source, tries to gather up all the, the symbols, all the variables and functions and types that are in your source code and all the references to that. And we store that in a database and then that's available to a lot of really interesting features that the CDT provides. And it you to quickly search for those uh, symbols in your source, uh, be able to determine relationships between them and be able to navigate through your code fairly, fairly quickly. As well, the CDT has a, a fairly extensive build infrastructure as well. There's really two ways to integrate the CDT um, and, in order to do builds with it. Um, obviously, when you're, you have a project that already has uh, a build infrastructure set up using make files or other scripts or other build utilities, um, the CDT is able to essentially sit on top of that, um, invoke those utilities um, when you request a build, and as well as we're able to take a look at the output from those builds, um, determine if there are any compile errors, and to be able to uh, essentially raise, create markers that let you navigate back to the source code quickly to find out where those compile errors are. As well, when you're doing small projects, uh, or if you're you know, new to C or C++ and you don't want to learn how to write make files, because they are fairly complex, and if you're doing something small and quick, they can be uh, cumbersome to, to build, the CDT does provide an automated build system that lets you um, basically write your code, um, give it a hint at what your compile options that you want to want to use, and actually do the build for you and generate and invoke the commands automatically for you. Once your system is built, um, the next step usually is you want to enter into a debug session, try to see if uh, and pinpoint any problems that you're seeing in, at runtime, and the CDT has a very nice visual debug environment. Usually when you're doing command line tools such as GDB, um, you really you're, you have to learn a fairly complex command set in order to you know, do your debugging, to do stepping, and to look at variable values and that. And even when you get that working, it's really a, you're getting a one line at a time response. What the CDT enables with its debug integration is a, a two-dimensional visualization of that session. You can quickly take a look at you know, the stack, see where you are in it, what, who's called who to get where you are. You can actually click on those uh, on the di different levels of the stack to sh show in the source code in the editor where those calls are being made. And really lets you quickly navigate to understand what the context is of where you are in your debug session. As well, we have a really nice visualization of the variables 
um, whether they're locals or parameters or globals, um, basically lets you navigate through the complex structures to quickly take a look at what the values are. And as well, you can just click and actually enter new values and those are automatically um, sent to the debugger to, to make the changes. Um, so the debug, it's really, the whole visual debug thing is what sold me on IDEs to begin with, because it's really, um, that's when you really realize the value of having a, a graphical interface on, available to you to kind of hide away the details of complex debug session. So those are four main aspects of the CDT. One of the benefits we get um, from being uh, on the Eclipse platform is that it's highly extensible. And for the Memetics IDE, we, we've actually built even higher tools that, uh, that we ship with our product. One of them is the application profiler. And what it does is takes a look at the, the individual lines of code, how, how often they've run, how long they've taken in, in, during a profiling session. And basically we integrate with the CDT, we can show that information in the editor. Um, you can take a look at different problem areas you may be running into. And then while you're in the editor, you can go in and make the changes and try to, and to fix those and address those problems. Click a button, you're built. Click another button and you're back profiling again to, to see if it actually improved the situation. And that goes beyond what we provide with Momentix as well. There are many tool vendors that have integrated with Eclipse and with the CDT that provide even higher level tools and different, different things that improve your software development. There's UML modeling tools that help you visualize graphically the structure of your system. There's code analysis tools that try to find uh, problems before you actually have to get to the runtime and analyzing them statically. As well, there's runtime analysis tools that test for performance and manage even higher level processes, such as your test process um, and your whole development process, whole development life cycle. And really, what building on Eclipse and having the CDT in open source, really what we're able to do is bring the, the value of those, those tools into a world-class IDV that's available to the, the QNX community. So this talk, I've talked about the CDT and its four major components and how it forms the C, C++ development environment at the core of the Momentix IDE. I hope you find this talk useful and I hope that you check out the, the Momentix IDE.